in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you named? Lee Oliver. Lee Oliver. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood, yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. You led your people, Israel, through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Lee according to your boundless mercy, and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, in which he himself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name, at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And as the family answers for Lee, we may also speak the words and answer ourselves, extolling and remembering our own baptisms. Lee, do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Lee, Oliver, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Very good. You may take that. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of, his lamb, of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Lee the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace that according to your good pleasure, he may, lead, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise of and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this third, this third Sunday of Advent is from Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst you shall never again fear evil. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle, the epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. In the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people 
of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, John began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise we turn to Hymn 341.
we hear again a few of the verses of the appointed gospel reading of Luke 7. And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and teachers uh, and the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. In the name of Jesus. To the question of Jesus, what should we want to see? We wake up on Sunday morning, have breakfast, drive to church, maybe say hi to a few friends in the narthex, sit down in a pew, what do we want to see? Or we open our Bible during the week, maybe on lunch break, maybe before we go to bed, we open the Bible, what do we want to see? We speak with a friend, a brother or sister in Christ, maybe about a problem at work, maybe something in the family. We speak with this Christian friend, what should we want to hear from that conversation? Luke 7:24. Jesus spoke to the crowds concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind, what then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing, behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet, yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. The people Jesus is addressing had gone out to the Jordan to see John the Baptist. There this prophet is, out in the wilderness, away from the city. He's calling all sinners to be baptized into repentance and the forgiveness of sins. That comes right before this text. So what did you go out to see, asked Jesus to them later. You didn't go out to see a reed shaken by the wind, which is to say, you didn't go out to see someone ready to tell you whatever is acceptable to the prevailing powers. You didn't go out to see someone telling you whatever they thought that you wanted to hear. And you didn't go out to see someone dressed in soft clothing. They are in the places of power, the king's courts. You went out to see John the Baptist. He was different, dressed in wilderness clothing, eating wilderness food, yet speaking gifts from the Lord. You don't get from the Sadducees in the city, you don't get any gifts from them. They are dressed in the acceptable clothing. They do speak the acceptable message. Acceptable, that is, to the prevailing powers and the winds of the culture. The priests at the temple and the Sadducees, they will instruct you on how to live an acceptable life how to stay away from those who are lowly and dirty, and they'll tell you how much money to leave in the plate. But they are not speaking to you gifts from the Lord. That's the distinction. Either you're going to hear preaching of how to live an acceptable life and dedicate yourself to God, or you're going to hear preaching which speaks to you and your family the gifts of the Lord. Either the preaching is telling you what you need to do what you need to commit, or is telling you the opposite, what the Lord is doing and what he is giving you as gift. Do you want to hear preaching which speaks to you not how to live an acceptable life, 
but which speaks to you gifts from the Lord? Then if you live in Jerusalem, go out to the wilderness to hear the prophet. Go out to see John the Baptist. He's out by the Jordan gathering sinners to the Lord's word. John is calling sinners from their sin and then bestowing on them the Lord's name. He's baptizing them into the gift of repentance and the forgiveness of sins, Luke tells us, so that the sinners walk away from the Jordan, they return to their lives of work and play, but now as sinners, cleansed by the gift the Lord is giving through his instrument, John. So now when Jesus is reminding the people that they went out to the Jordan to see John the Baptist, to be baptized by him as a gift from the Lord for the forgiveness of sins, the Pharisees and teachers of the law, they were listening in too. They weren't happy. Luke 7, 29. Jesus said, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by John. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they aren't pleased. They preach the Bible. They have no problem with that. They're known for that. They know the Bible cover to cover better than anyone, and they'll make sure that you know that about them. They want the preaching of the Word of God, though, to be about obedience, about your commitment, about you living a clean, victorious life. They want the preaching to be about, in short, your works righteousness. They did not want the proclamation to be about the sinner being cleansed by the free gift of God, the sinner being justified by the word of forgiveness, the sinner walking back into life in Jerusalem with the full knowledge and confidence that God is the giver of gifts, and by his giving of gifts, the sinner is saved. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law reject the purpose of God for themselves. Luke 7.30. So what should we want to see? We wake up on Sunday morning, have breakfast, drive to church, say hi to a few friends in the narthex perhaps, sit down in the pew. What should we want to see? Or we open our Bibles during the week, maybe on lunch break, maybe before bed. We open the Bible. What do we want to see? Maybe we're troubled with a problem in the family, perhaps, maybe at work. We speak with a Christian friend. What should we want to hear in that conversation? We want to see the gifts of Jesus. We want to hear the word to cleanse us of all sin. We want to be gathered to the one named as the Son of Man because he came among sinners to stand in for all men, all people, taking our sin upon himself. We want to hear the proclamation of the one who came eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners and made them his own. Luke 7, 34. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. We want to see the Lord who takes a child and puts his name on that child by his own promise in baptism as we saw our Lord do this morning for little Lee. So that in baptism, and because baptism is not our work of the law, but our Lord's gift of the gospel, in baptism our Lord is bringing to the sinner and bestowing upon the sinner all the gifts of the cross. When we open our Bibles at lunch break, at family devotion, whenever, we want to see this Lord who came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. That in seeing this Lord revealed in the words of Holy Scripture, we would again know the forgiveness of all our sin. And when we speak with a friend, a brother or sister in Christ, about something troubling us or them, about any travail, we want to hear not a conversation which is nothing more than a reed shaking in the wind, telling us whatever seems smooth, or acceptable to our culture, but we want to hear the conversation bestowing the gifts of Jesus, 
the conversation of all sin, all of our sin, being taken up by him and put to death on the cross, and of the gifts of the cross being brought to us now, being bestowed upon us in our lives in the Lord's appointed ways of the preaching of his gospel, in the bestowal of his name and baptism, in the receiving of his body and blood according to his word and promise. For he is the Lord who comes eating and drinking with sinners to bring to them all his gifts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, God of Jacob, who made heaven and earth and all that is in them and who keeps the faith forever, you provide us with all that we need to support our bodies and spirits for time and eternity. You clothe us with garments of salvation and cover us with robes of righteousness. Continue to bless us according to your will and by your grace. Keep us steadfast in the true faith for as many days as you give us breath. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, King of the true Israel of faith, the church, since your Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies your people throughout the world by the gospel, where there is division in the church, make us one with you. Where schism, call us back to the fellowship of your doctrine. Keep us in the one true faith, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Holy Spirit, who once sent forth John the baptizer to bring people to Christ, the Lamb of God, let your church today in every place faithfully tell the good news of Jesus, who alone takes away the sin of the world, that every person may receive his salvation and join in confessing Christ alone, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, who dwells in the midst of your people, since you provide an abundance of the fruits of the earth, grant us the will and ability to distribute this food for the benefit of our neighbor and help us to work together to provide good shelter in all places. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, who saves the lame and gathers the outcast, since you summon us to work for you in every calling, Give employers the ability to provide beneficial labor for all who can work, and let every Christian rejoice in charitably providing for the needs of those who cannot work. We pray especially for those who serve in the armed forces of our nation, including Ian, Jacob, Jake, Colin, Bill, Cale, Christopher, Michael, Dave, Wesley, Peyton, Elliot, and Nicole, that they may serve in safety and with honor from their fellow citizens. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, who heals the sick and the lame, give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and health to the lepers, since it is your will to cleanse and preserve your people in spirit, soul, and body, relieve the burdens of your people who are sick or hospitalized, especially Edna, Al, Jim, Lynn, Wayne, Russell, Jan, Laura, John, Jim, Brooks, Mary, Shannon, Kylie, Becky, Marty, and David. Cast away all fears through the hope of eternal life, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, friend of tax collectors and sinners, you hear the supplication of those who cry out to you. Let us give thanks always, praying continually for our neighbor, making our requests known to you, that we may be anxious in nothing. Bless our congregation, that we speak to one another in humility and gentleness, that our reasonableness may be made known to all. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, righteous and having salvation, who comes in lowliness and gentleness, 
Comfort those who are weak or oppressed. Protect all mothers and be with all children, both born and unborn, guarding them from any who would bring violence or death. Speak your blessing to all who have been made low, Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Lord of life, as you have given husband to the wife, wife to the husband, and parents to the children, bless all families with peace, wholeness, and joy in you. Where there is division, speak your word of unity. Where brokenness, give healing. Where guilt, speak your word to absolve. Where aloneness, bind together as one, as you are in oneness with your Father, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Father in heaven, who feeds the hungry and lifts up those bowed down, since you graciously invite us to your table of oneness with you and fellowship with each other in your doctrine, grant that we, with our mouths, receive the body and blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and with renewed faith rejoice always in your forgiveness of all sin, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Take and eat. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. announcements. Most are in the bulletin, uh, but of course we're in Advent now, um, and so we have the children's Christmas program this morning. That will be following uh, the Lord's service. It will be at 1030, so everyone is invited to that. It will be in the fellowship hall. I think it sounds like the kids have done a great job preparing, so it should be nice for us to see them sing our Lord's praises. So the children's Christmas program this morning, also an announcement which did not make it into the bulletin, it came in too late, but Los Palomas Care Center has uh, reached out to our congregation with a request for Christmas gifts for its residents, some of whom are forgotten during the holidays. So what, what we can do is we can help by providing each resident with a cozy pair of socks. I'm not sure why cozy is there. I don't know. But we don't want any uncozy socks. But a cozy pair of socks. Please put only one pair of socks in a small gift bag, and it can be put under the Christmas tree back in the fellowship hall before December 22. Uh, we have a goal of 100 pairs of socks and 100 gift bags. And the reason for the gift bag is to leave the gift bag open so that it's easy for us to add... Um, a devotion of our Lord's word and some prayers with, with each one as a Christmas gift. So any questions, see the banner or the, um, the poster next to the Christmas tree in the fellowship hall and or talk with Laura Clovis. And she can help you with that. I think that's it for announcements. We do want to welcome any guests that we have with us, especially if you're a guest. It's an honor to be with you at the Lord's name. And if you're able, and if you would like, please join us for coffee and other things back in the fellowship hall as you leave the Lord's service. And if you're able past that, um, join us for seeing the children sing our Lord's praises. Let us go forth in our Lord's name. 